Contention. Critique. Conjecture. Conclusion. The Huddle with paperplusoffice.co.nz. Shop online anytime. They're open 24-7. 18 to 6, this evening's Huddle political commentator Josie Pagani and bo- blogger. I almost said bogger. Blogger. Like bogger. <laughs> bogger. Hi, bogger. Oh, Cameron, right into the bog. Cameron Slater. Oh, you I'm, are. Right well, into how, bog. What good, self, good self-knowledge you have, Cam. If I have you, I'm just slightly off topic here, but I love it. The ACC have put out this report, report on, on injuries over winter, and someone with a very good sense of humour has clearly written, that, written this. Josie, have you ever been hurt by the soup, the slippers or the umbrella and had to file a claim with the ACC? Yeah, I love this. Soup is soup. now officially more dangerous than ice. Unless, is, yes, non, non-sporting... Non- <laughs> non non sporting snow and ice, sixty injuries, super one hundred and twenty eight. Slippers. slippers are more evil than umbrellas, which yes. puts a whole new sort of um, phase of James Bond movies coming, doesn't it? You can it no longer have the poisonous umbrella; you're going to have the poisonous slipper. Slipper. You fall on over your slippers or hurt your back putting them on cam. You haven't had to make any claims on uh, ACC ever. Right? Slippers. I've put the slipper on plenty of people. Oh. Um, when it comes when it comes to soup, you know the, the best thing is is take the advice of that cop who was talking about pies and always blow on the soup just to make sure that it's a little bit cold. And there's the old waiter's joke about old chickens making the best soup, of course, as well. I wonder if there's an ACC code for people who bite on their soup expecting a proper meal, not a soup, because soup's not a proper meal. Oh, you nothing like, like a good soup. Something. It was good, good soup. enough for the workhouse when they called it gruel. Now, listen, uh, MediaWorks, fascinating, Josie. You've got $700 million worth of debt. I'm wondering if I could do this trick with the mortgage. You say, well, actually, I'm going to dissolve this company, or even the credit card, dissolve this company. I'm going to start a new company with $100 million bucks worth of debt, which makes me a lot more viable. And that other $600 million, well, mm, that can go in another company, including $22 million bucks, possibly owed to the taxpayer. It's yes, interesting, I, isn't it? I think it's called the economy of Cyprus when we start all doing that. You put, put your credit card into receivership. It sounds great, doesn't it? Yeah. It, it it's extraordinary. What's killed this business is debt. debt. It's not the quality of the product. It's not... Uh, they keep trying to blame the global financial crisis uh, and the, the changing business. It's because the business, it's, the business it's is changing. Debt. I mean, people are, people are getting out of these big asset papers or TV channels, but... End of the day, it's bad management, and thank God we have a publicly owned well, I don't know TVNZ. The, I don't, otherwise, we'd be it would be like Jetstar. We'd, we'd I don't have Jetstar. Well, Cameron, I don't know that it is. Hang on, let me ask. I don't know that it is bad management. I think somebody way back in the day paid too much for it and then lumbered the company with too much yeah. debt. I don't think it's management's fault at all. I think it was they paid they hundreds of millions too much for it, Cameron, and and, the, and then the debt has crippled them. Yeah, I totally agree with you on that. It's not bad management. It's not even bad programming. Programming. And it's certainly not what Claire Curran claims, where it's all Sky, Sky TV's <laughs> fault. I mean, I think she's got it confused between Sky City and Sky TV for who the bad people are here. But don't but, forget, guys, they did buy it in debt. They, I mean, they, they took debt out to buy it. I mean, the whole business from the very that's beginning... The owner. It's ownership, on though. Debt. It's ownership. So it, yeah, but it just shows you that, that you can't run a business... Uh, that's riddled with debt. And no, you can't. You're going to, you know, let, make make old bones. No, you're not. Josie Bagani, Cameron Slater, brief bra- break. Back in a moment. It is twelve to six. The huddle this evening. Josie Bagani and Cameron Slater. Josie, how can the opposition parties say there's an, a crisis in manufacturing, and they come out with this report when the numbers, the facts, say we're in the best heart manufacturing wise since two thousand and four? Uh, well, I think. Mostly because actually the problem with manufacturing goes back 40 years, Susan. That's the problem. So, I mean, look, I'll take any good news. Any, any new job is, a good, is good news. But the, but the real problem is that successive governments, if you take the politics out of it, um, for 40 years our manufacturing sector has been basically slowing down. So we sell less and less of high-value goods. And meanwhile, we, we buy them. You know, we buy computers and electronics from Japan. We buy cars and chemicals from Germany. But, I mean, our imports... I mean, we five times as many high value goods as we export we're importing. So Cameron, is it about is it about that or is it about a rebalancing? Is it about manufacturing finding actually what we should be manufacturing in the twenty first century? Well, I mean, Josie's talking about TVs and things like that. I mean, the reality is our labour costs. No, I'm not. Never... <laughs> computers. We computers. Our electronic computers. goods and things like that. And computers. No, computers. Which... It's all the same sort of stuff made in the factories. Are we That's prepared a very old-fashioned thing to say. Are, are we prepared to have manufacturing jobs like the manufacturing jobs the Chinese provide? I don't think so, because all your union pals, Josie, will be up in arms saying these are low-cost jobs, just but like actually, they did, Cam, that's a really like good they did point. when Watties um, brought some jobs in, um, back in 
from overseas. You had Dari and Fenton saying, we don't want those jobs because they're low-cost jobs. I, I totally agree with you, Ken. That's a really good point, that actually we can't compete with China. China has a massive, intense labour market, heaps of people um, producing low-value goods. We can't compete with that. We've got to produce yeah. what Paul Callaghan called the, the weird stuff. You know, the yeah, the niche. The, the niche high value. Yeah, exactly. Make exactly. A fortune exactly. Off so how do you get to that So point? isn't that what manufacturing is doing at the moment, though? The Labor Party. So how do you get to that point without investing in innovation, without saying we want a tax system which favours the productive sector? It's exactly what it's about. No, so what they've, you they've do, had Cam? this inquiry into a, into a so-called crisis, which has been overtaken by facts, and it really looked like a strategic retreat from, from these guys. And they've come up with, oh, we want to lower the exchange rate. Well, the exchange rate went down 10% by itself without any intervention. But look, and then the you've got the bizarre comment by Russell Norman where he says, um, look, we've left out the printing money thing because of realism and compromise. And what that really means is even they know that that's crazy. The truth is, though, Cam, if you want us to keep making old-fashioned TVs and, and I don't. whatever and logs of wood on Wellington Wharf, uh, then that's fine. The status quo is fine. But if you want to do those high-value products, if you want to... I mean, at the moment, so the, the Greens only country... the cutting down the trees for the logs in the first place. The only country in the OECD that, that uh, imports as much as us and exports as little as us is Greece. So it is a problem. And if you take the politics out of it and say, what would you do to get us creating those weird niche stuff that's going to make us money. Why aren't we making well, a capital um, um, the iPad frames, you know, the metal, the aluminium that makes iPads, the, the frames that iPads go into? We need to do that niche oh, stuff. We've but, got to but have a plan Josie, for that. why would you ship the raw materials here, produce that here for the iPad frames, and then ship them to China to be finished? It's ridiculous. It's, it's not going to work. We are at the arse of the end of the world, and that is a simple fact of geography. And doing nothing, um, uh, even if you do what the Greens want, is no one is going to send their products here right. for finishing. We Thank you for that. Fencing. We will leave it there. Cameron Slater, Josie Pagani. A bit of sport next. It's 8 to 6.